Hello, I'm Dawn Tan. Welcome to our special coverage of the swearing-in ceremony of the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. 17 days after the ruling People's Action Party won the right to form the government, 20 ministers will today take their oaths in a ceremony to be presided over by President Halima Yaqob. Also being sworn in will be the slate of senior ministers of state and ministers of state. We'll take you over now to the ceremonial venues. Well, this year's ceremony will be conducted rather differently from those of the past. The need for safe distancing measures means that the swearing-in ceremony will be held concurrently in two locations. The state room at the Astana as well as the reception hall at Parliament House. Appointment holders to be sworn in today are divided between these two sites where they and their spouses will be able to witness proceedings via a live video link between those two venues. Invited guests will witness proceedings from two other rooms at the Istana and at the Parliament House, respectively. Again, this is to ensure safe distancing due to the COVID-19 situation. Guests this evening include members of parliament, former political office holders, ambassadors from ASEAN, judges, permanent secretaries, and chairman of statutory boards. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong announced his new cabinet over the weekend, which included several office reshuffles as well as promotions. This swearing-in ceremony comes before Singapore's 14th parliament to be convened later. Prime Minister Lee will be sworn in first at the Astana this evening. Thereafter, he'll be followed by Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiet, who is at the Parliament House this evening. DPM Heng retains his portfolio as Finance Minister, and he will take on a new role as the Coordinating Minister for Economic Policies. Next to be sworn in are Senior Minister Teo Chi Hien, who is the Coordinating Minister for National Security. And Senior Minister Tharman Shanmugaratnam, the Coordinating Minister for social policies. They will be followed by the rest of the office holders. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mohammad Abdullah Al Habshi. About 200 guests across both venues are awaiting the arrival of President Halima Yaqob. The swearing-in ceremony comes more than two weeks after Singapore's 13th general elections, where the PAP won over 61% of the popular vote. The new cabinet was unveiled on Saturday against the backdrop of the challenges brought about by COVID-19. In announcing his team, Prime Minister Lee said that the new cabinet seeks to balance continuity, exposure and renewal to lead Singapore through the current public health and economic crises and into the future. 
several ministers will take on new portfolios as well. Prime Minister Lee said that this was to expose the office holders to different portfolios, to gain both breadth and depth, to understand the intricacies of the issues and to see things from different perspectives. While Mr Lee has said he will step down from his position as Prime Minister during this term of office, he has also pledged to see through the COVID-19 crisis and to hand over Singapore in good working order to his successors. Ladies and gentlemen, the President. President Halima Yaakob is making her way to the oath table accompanied by her aide-de-camp. She will be joined by Chief Justice Sundaresh Menon who will lead the oath taking this evening. This will be Madam Halima Yaakob's first cabinet swearing in since she assumed the office of president in 2017. The Master of Ceremony will now seek the President's permission to commence the ceremonial proceedings. Good evening, Madam President. We have the permission to proceed with the ceremony now. Ladies and gentlemen, the President will now deliver her speech. Prime Minister, Cabinet Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, just six months ago, it was a very different world. In Singapore, we were advancing steadily on the course we had set over many years to develop our country, upgrading our economy and our workforce, developing our physical infrastructure, strengthening our social safety nets, fulfilling the aspirations of our people, and ensuring that Singapore remains a land of opportunity where every Singaporean who works hard can make good for themselves. At the same time, we watch with growing concern some developments in other countries. Globalization and free trade were in retreat. Geopolitical tensions were rising between the big powers. Many societies around the world were under stress. With their peoples angry and frustrated about their lives, 
and this sentiment fueling a wave of nativism and protectionism. These winds of unhappiness were erupting in various forms, be it Brexit in the UK, the yellow vest in France, or the drastic loss of support for moderate political leaders in the US, Europe, and elsewhere. Singapore, being a highly open society, was exposed to these same pressures. But fortunately, we were coping better than most because our people were united and our government focused on addressing our people's concerns and improving their lives. In the last five years, we have made significant progress. On the economic front, we strengthened Singapore's competitiveness. The Future Economy Council, chaired by DPM Heng Sui Kiat, led the effort to transform our industries to prepare them for the future and retrain our workforce to stay productive and employable. We also strengthened our social compact. The government made major investments and policy reforms to improve people's lives and prospects and to make the basic needs of life more affordable and accessible. We enable young Singaporeans to buy HDB flats earlier to start their families. We invested heavily in preschools and enhanced preschool subsidies to give every child a good start in life. We give our people peace of mind on healthcare costs, particularly our elderly, through the Pioneer Generation Package and Merdeka Generation Package and schemes like MediShield Life and CareShield Life. And we supported Singaporeans in their lifelong learning journeys through Skills Future and continuing education. To support those who need extra help, the government enhanced silver support, workfare and comcare, and improved social service delivery on the ground. Singaporeans from all walks of life step forward to partner the government in all these efforts through the SG Together movement to create a shared future where every Singaporean had a stake and to build a fair and just society with opportunities for all. Then suddenly this year, with COVID-19, we found ourselves in a crisis of a generation. It is an upheaval that could derail our costs and set back Singapore for many years. Our progress in the last five years and over many years before that has given us a strong base to work from. Even so, we have had to master all our strength and our resources to mount an emergency response to this overwhelming challenge. Over the last six months, the government has been totally occupied with the COVID-19 outbreak and its economic fallout. We hugely expanded our medical facilities to treat COVID-19 cases. We introduced rigorous safe distancing measures, scaled up testing and contact tracing, and implemented the circuit breaker to slow down transmission of the virus. We launched a massive and complex operation to bring the outbreak in the migrant worker dormitories under control and keep both the migrant workers and Singaporeans safe. To cushion the impact of the outbreak on our jobs and income, the Minister for Finance introduced four budgets in quick succession, injecting close to $100 billion. The government sought my permission to draw more than half of this from the past reserves. Having consulted the Council of Presidential Advisers, and considered the request carefully, I approved the draw on reserves and gave the government my full support. I concurred with its assess assessment that we needed to bring all our resources to bear to deal with this existential challenge, the most serious since our nation's independence, and protect Singaporeans' lives and livelihoods. After six months of unremitting effort, 
and the tireless work of our frontline heroes, we have stabilized our situation in Singapore. But the crisis is far from over. The government called a general election to secure a fresh mandate and a new full term in order to make the necessary and difficult decisions to deal with the troubled times ahead. Now that the election is over, we must focus on the challenges and the agenda ahead. If anything good has come out of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is the reaffirmation of our Singapore spirit. Our resilience as one people has brought us through this crisis so far. I am heartened by the way Singaporeans from all walks of life have collectively mobilized resources to help one another in this most difficult of times. I am proud of how we have stood together in solidarity with one another. So for this next phase, I ask Singaporeans to similarly unite behind the government that we have elected and give it our full support to see Singapore through this crisis. Prime Minister, I have confidence that you and your team will steer Singapore safely through these tumultuous times so that we can resume our journey to build a better future for ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, I now ask Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong to come forward to take his affirmations of allegiance and for due execution of office followed by the ministers he has designated as members of his cabinet. Chief Justice will witness the affirmations of allegiance and for due execution of office. The affirmation of allegiance. I, Lee Sien Lung, having been appointed to the office of Prime Minister, do solemnly affirm that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore and that I will preserve, protect and defend the Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. The affirmation for due execution of office. I, Lee Hsien Loong, being chosen and appointed as Prime Minister of Singapore, do solemnly affirm that I will at all times faithfully discharge my duties as Prime Minister according to law and to the best of my knowledge and ability without fear or favour, affection or ill will. Signing of the Affirmations. In accordance with Article 25.1 of the Constitution, I hereby appoint Mr. Lee Hsien Loong as Prime Minister of the Republic of Singapore. Presentation of Instrument of Appointment. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you.
In accordance with legal requirements, appointees at the Parliament House are kindly reminded to show the President the written oaths and affirmations through the camera before and after signing. Appointment and swearing in of the Deputy Prime Minister, Coordinating Minister for Economic Policies and Minister for Finance. The Chief Justice will now lead in the swearing in. The affirmation of allegiance. I, having been appointed to the office of Minister. I, Heng Sui Kiet, having been appointed to the office of Minister. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore. And that I will preserve. And that I will preserve. Protect and defend. Protect and defend. The Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. The Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. The affirmation for due execution of office. I, being chosen and appointed as Minister of Singapore. I, Heng Sui Kiet, having been chosen and appointed as Minister of Singapore. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will at all times that I will at all times faithfully discharge my duties as minister according to law. Faithfully discharge my duties as minister according to law. And to the best of my knowledge and ability. And to the best of my knowledge and ability. Without fear or favor. Without fear or favor. Affection or ill will. Affection or ill will. Signing of the affirmations. DPM Heng is swearing in from the Parliament House and President Halima Yaakob is able to witness his oath-taking via a live video feed to the Astana. As advised by the Prime Minister, and pursuant to Article 25.1 of the Constitution, I hereby appoint the person before me as a Minister of the Republic of Singapore. Presentation of instrument of appointment by the Chairman of the Council of Presidential Advisers on behalf of the President. The Chairman of the Council of Presidential Advisers is Mr. Eddie Teo. Mr. Heng Sui Kiet, Deputy Prime Minister, Coordinating Minister for Economic Policies and Minister for Finance. Appointment and swearing in of the senior ministers and coordinating ministers. The Chief Justice will now lead in the swearing in. I, having been appointed to the office of minister. I, Yu Chi Hien, having been appointed to the office of minister. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore. And that I will preserve. And that I will preserve. Protect and defend. Protect and defend the Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. The Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. The affirmation for due execution of office. I, being chosen and appointed as Minister of Singapore. I, Kyo Chi Hien, being chosen and appointed as Minister of Singapore. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. 
that I will at all times that I will at all times faithfully discharge my duties as minister according to law faithfully discharge my duties as minister according to law and to the best of my knowledge and ability and to the best of my knowledge and ability without fear or favor without fear or favor affection or ill will affection or ill will signing of the affirmations As advised by the Prime Minister and pursuant to Article 25.1 of the Constitution, I hereby appoint the person before me as the Minister of the Republic of Singapore. Presentation of instrument of appointment by the Chairman of the Council of Presidential Advisers on behalf of the President. Mr. Teo Chi Hien, Senior Minister and Coordinating Minister for National Security. Chief Justice will now lead in the swearing in. I, having been appointed to the office of Minister, I, Tharmachor Nagarandam, having been appointed to the office of Minister, do solemnly affirm, do solemnly affirm, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore, and that I will preserve and that I will preserve, protect and defend, protect and defend, the Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. The Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. The affirmation for due execution of office. I being chosen and appointed as Minister of Singapore. I, Tharman Chandragaratnam, being chosen and appointed as Minister of Singapore. Do solemnly affirm, do solemnly affirm that I will at all times that I will at all times faithfully discharge my duties as minister according to law faithfully discharge my duties as minister according to law and to the best of my knowledge and ability and to the best of my knowledge and ability without fear or favor without fear or favor affection or ill will affection or ill will signing of the affirmations As advised by the Prime Minister and pursuant to Article 25.1 of the Constitution, I hereby appoint the person before me as Minister of the Republic of Singapore. Presentation of Instrument of Appointment. Mr. Taman Shamukaratnam, Senior Minister and Coordinating Minister for Social Policies. Appointment and swearing in of the ministers.
the oath and affirmation of allegiance. I, having been appointed to the office of minister, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore and that I will preserve, and that I will preserve protect, and protect and defend the Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. To oath and affirmation for due execution of office. I, being chosen and appointed as Minister of Singapore, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will at all times faithfully discharge my duties as Minister according to law and to the best of my knowledge and ability, and to the best of my knowledge and ability without fear or favour, affection or ill will. Or Signing of the oaths and affirmations. As advised by the Prime Minister, and pursuant to Article 25.1 of the Constitution, I hereby appoint the persons before me as Ministers of the Republic of Singapore. Presentation of Instruments of Appointment. Dr. Eng Eng Hen, Minister for Defence. Mr. S. Iswara, Minister for Communications and Information and Minister in Charge of Trade Relations. <laughs> Ms. Grace Fu Hai Yen, Minister for Sustainability and the Environment. Mr. Lawrence Wong, Minister for Education and Second Minister for Finance. Mr. Ong Yi Kang, Minister for Transport. This is Josephine Teo, Minister for Manpower and Second Minister for Home Affairs. <laughs> Ms. Indrani Raja, Minister, Prime Minister's Office, Second Minister for Finance and Second Minister for National Development. Dr. Mohammad Maliki bin Osman, Minister, Prime Minister's Office, Second Minister for Education, and Second Minister for Foreign Affairs. <laughs> Dr. Tan Si Ling, Minister, Prime Minister's Office, Second Minister for Manpower, and Second Minister for Trade and Industry.
The Chief Justice will now lead in the swearing in. <coughs> the Oath and Affirmation of Allegiance. I, having been appointed to the office of Minister, I, I have been appointed to the office of Minister, do solemnly swear or affirm, do solemnly affirm, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore, that I will preserve, and that I will preserve, protect and defend, protect and defend the Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. The Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. To oath and affirmation for due execution of office. I, being chosen and appointed as Minister of Singapore, do solemnly swear or affirm, do solemnly swear that I will at all times, that that I will I will at all times, times faithfully discharge my duties as Minister according to law. And to the best of my knowledge and ability, and to the best of my knowledge and ability, without fear or favour, without fear or favour, affection or ill will, affection or ill will. So help from the dog. Signing of the oaths and affirmations. As advised by the Prime Minister and pursuant to Article 25.1 of the Constitution, I hereby appoint the persons before me as Ministers of the Republic of Singapore. Presentation of instrument of appointment by the Chairman of the Council of Presidential Advisers on behalf of the President. Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan, Minister for Foreign Affairs. <laughs> Mr. K. Shanmugam, Minister for Home Affairs and Minister for Law. Mr. Gan Kim Yong, Minister for Health. <laughs> Mr. Chan Chun Seng, Minister for Trade and Industry. Mr. Masakos Sulkifli, Minister for Social and Family Development and Second Minister for Health. <laughs> Mr. Desmond Lee, Minister for National Development and Minister in Charge of Social Services Integration. Mr. Edwin Tong, Minister for Culture, Community and Youth, and Second Minister for Law. <laughs> Mr.
appointment and swearing in of the Ministers of State. The Chief Justice will now lead in the swearing in to oath and affirmation of allegiance. I, having been appointed to the office of Minister, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore. That I will preserve, that I will preserve protect, and defend, protect and defend the Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. The Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. The oath and affirmation for due execution of office. <coughs> I, being chosen and appointed as Minister of Singapore, I will be chosen and appointed as Minister of Singapore. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will at all times faithfully discharge my duties as minister according to law and to the best of my knowledge and ability without fear or favour Without, Without fear, fear or favor, affection or ill will. Affection or ill will, so help me God. Signing of the oaths and affirmations. As advised by the Prime Minister and pursuant to Article 25.1 of the Constitution, I hereby appoint the persons before me as Ministers of the Republic of Singapore. Presentation of Instruments of Appointment Dr. Amy Kaur Lian Swan Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Sustainability and the Environment, and Ministry of Transport. <laughs> Dr. Ko Po Kun, Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Health. <laughs> Ms. Lo Yen Ling, Minister of State, Ministry of Culture, Community and Youth, and Ministry of Trade and Industry. <laughs> Ms. Sun Shueling, Minister of State, Ministry of Education, and Ministry of Social and Family Development. Ms. Gan Xiao Huang, Minister of State, Ministry of Education, and Ministry of Manpower. <laughs> Mr. Tan Kiat Hao, Minister of State, Prime Minister's Office, and Ministry of National Development.
The Chief Justice will now lead in the swearing in. The oath and affirmation of allegiance. I, having been appointed to the office of minister, I, I the Chief Secretary, Secretary, having been appointed to the office of, office of minister, minister, do solemnly swear or affirm, do solemnly do solemnly affirm, affirm that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore, and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore, and that I will preserve, and that I will, and I will preserve, protect and defend, protect and defend the Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. The Constitution of the Republic of Singapore. To all the affirmation for due execution of office. I, being chosen and appointed as Minister of Singapore, I, I General General, being chosen and appointed, appointed as Minister of Singapore, do solemnly swear or affirm, do do solemnly solemnly affirm, affirm that I will at all times, that that I will will at all times faithfully discharge my duties as Minister according to law, faithfully discharge my duties as Minister according to law. And to the best of my knowledge and ability, and to the best, best of my knowledge and ability, without fear or favor, without, without fear, fear or favor, favor, affection or ill will, affection, affection or, or ill will. will. So help me. Signing of the oaths and affirmations. As advised by the Prime Minister and pursuant to Article 25.1 of the Constitution, I hereby appoint the persons before me as Ministers of the Republic of Singapore. Presentation of instrument of appointment by the Chairman of the Council of Presidential Advisers on behalf of the President. Mr. Heng Chi Hao, Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Defence. <laughs> Ms. Sim An, Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Communications and Information and Ministry of National Development. Mr. Chi Hong Tat, Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Transport. <laughs> Dr. Janil Putucheri, Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Communications and Information and Ministry of Health. Mr. Zaki Mohammed, Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Defence and Ministry of Manpower. <laughs> Associate Professor Mohammed Faisal bin Ibrahim, Minister of State, Ministry of Home Affairs and Ministry of National Development. Mr. Desmond Tan, Minister of State, Ministry of Home Affairs and Ministry of Sustainability and the Environment. <clears throat> Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister will now deliver his speech, first in Malay, 
then Chinese, and English. Madam President, Ministers and Members of Parliament, fellow Singaporeans, good evening. Let me start in Malay. Saudara saudari sekalian, kita baru sahaja melalui pilihan raya umum yang genting, yang berlangsung di tengah-tengah sebuah krisis segenerasi. Saya dan pasukan saya ingin mengucapkan terima kasih kepada rakyat Singapura kerana memberi kami kepercayaan untuk menggalas tanggungjawab yang sangat berat ini. Kami akan menggunakan mandat ini untuk bertindak secara berhemah dan penuh tanggungjawab bagi pihak anda demi menangani cabaran-cabaran besar yang mendatang. Saya dan pasukan saya berazam untuk membawa Singapura keluar daripada krisis ini dengan selamat. Bersama-sama, kita akan menjadi lebih teguh selepas ini. COVID-19 terus menjadi krisis hebat yang sedang melumpuhkan dunia termasuk Singapura dari segi kesihatan dan ekonomi. Keadaan ekonomi sejagat dijangka terus suram. Banyak lagi pekerjaan akan hilang. Kami akan cuba sedaya upaya untuk selamatkan pekerjaan dan membantu mereka yang hilang pekerjaan mencari pekerjaan baru. Namun, selain menumpukan perhatian kepada cabaran yang mendesak, pemerintah juga harus mencorak hara tuju jangka panjang negara. Selain kemakmuran ekonomi, pemerintah juga mesti memenuhi aspirasi rakyat Singapura yang lebih luas. Kita mahu menjadi sebuah masyarakat yang adil dan saksama dengan pelbagai peluang untuk semua. Sebuah masyarakat yang lebih inklusif, yang menyediakan masa depan yang lebih cerah untuk rakyat, terutama generasi muda. Kita juga mahukan agar semangat kemanusiaan dalam masyarakat berbilang bangsa kita dapat berkembang mekar. Untuk terus berjaya, Singapura mesti sentiasa diterajui barisan pemimpin politik yang bermutu tinggi. Saya telah membentuk sebuah pasukan kabinet yang paling teguh untuk membawa Singapura maju ke hadapan. Tugas kabinet dan pemerintah baru kita telah pun bermula. Walau apapun aliran politik kita, jangan sekali-kali kita lupa bahawa pada dasarnya kita adalah rakyat Singapura. Oleh itu, marilah kita semua bersatu padu dan menumpukan perhatian kepada cabaran-cabaran utama di hadapan kita. Marilah kita bekerjasama sebagai satu Singapura demi memperbaiki kehidupan kita, menjamin masa depan kita, dan memperteguh serta memperindahkan tanah air yang kita sayangi dan banggakan ini. Kewi Tong Bao, Dajia Wan Shang Hao. Kuochu Liu Geyue, Dajia Shen Huo Bu Yi, Quan Min Yi Xin, Dui Kang Guan Bing Yi Qing, He Ying Fu Jing Ji Wei Ji. 整体上，我国疫情已经受到控制，所以我们能够逐渐复工、复业和复课。希望接下来的日子里，社区病例能维持在低个位数。不过，冠病将是一个长期的问题，它会持续影响我国经济和社会的发展，并对我们的生计和生活带来挑战。二零二零全国大选尘埃落定，我和我的团队感谢并虚心接受选民给我们明确的委托。我们将全力以赴、负责任地行使委托权，帮助国人解决生活上的困难，同时努力寻求新的机遇，让我国经济尽快复苏。我们的当务之急就是保障就业。为此。
全国就业理事会已经马不停蹄地展开工作，协助失业的工友，而一些工友会需要一段时间才能找到新的工作。此外，阻断期虽然结束了，但是为了保障工友的健康，一些领域要全面复工，还需要一段时间。因为政府有许多方面需要考量，以免疫情反弹，特别是建筑业，我们正竭尽所能，确保客工和工友的居住以及工作情况是安全的，以降低他们感染病毒的风险。因此，我欲请承包商了解政府的考量，政府会尽全力帮助这些公司逐步开工。并提供援助，让他们能够重新站稳脚跟。我们也必须做好准备，一些行业将不复以往，而政府也不可能一直支援他们。为了我国的长远发展，我们认为更好的策略是把资源放在建立新的优势和能力上，开拓新的领域，创造新的就业机会。借此帮助那些面临困境的企业和工友转战新兴领域，工友也会获得协助、接受培训，以胜任这些新的工作。我们的目标不只是度过眼前的危机，我们还必须为瞬息万变的未来做长期规划。所以，我们必须继续巩固和加强基础。让我国在危机过后更加稳定、更加强韧，人民的生活也有所提升。发展经济固然重要，但我们也要建设一个公正、平等和包容的社会，让国人不分种族、言语和宗教，不论家世背景，都能享有同等的机会，取得成功和实现自己的理想。新加坡社会的繁荣与进步，也取决于政治体制的稳定发展。这次的选举结果显示，人民希望行动党继续执政，但也要国会里有更多元化的声音，针对政策和计划展开更激烈的辩论。本届国会将有十二位反对党议员，是近年来最多的，同时也会有指定的。反对党领袖，国会复会后，我希望议员们能够提出实质的内容，展开有建设性的辩论，在重要课题上为选民发声。我也希望看到一个忠诚而负责任的反对党，不仅是对政策提出疑问和批评，而是能够进一步提出具体可行的。替代方案，这才有助于国人理解我国所面对的各种抉择和其中的利弊得失，同时，也让我们能够制定更完善的政策，造福人民。新加坡要长治久安、繁荣发展，除了需要能干的领导团队，更需要团结一致的人民。即便拥有不同的理念，我们始终都是新加坡人，都是一家人。新一届内阁已经展开工作，我们将分秒必争，致力让新加坡早日走出阴霾，和全民一起为更好的明天而奋斗。Madam President, fellow Singaporeans, Singaporeans have just gone through a crucial general election held in the midst of a tremendous crisis. We've been through six difficult months dealing with COVID-19 and the economic downturn precipitated by the virus. I call this election to give the government a fresh mandate and a full term to deal with the difficult months and years that still lie ahead. Singaporeans understood what was at stake. They considered carefully what their candidates and parties had to offer. And on polling day, 
voters turned out in full strength. They gave the PAP a clear mandate to form the government. My team and I are humbled that Singaporeans have entrusted us with this heavy responsibility. We will use our mandate to act on your behalf vigorously and unremittingly to deal with the challenges ahead and lead Singapore out of the crisis. The work of our new cabinet and government has already begun. The elections are behind us. Whatever our political persuasions, never forget that we are first and foremost Singaporeans. Let us all unite and focus our energies on the major challenges ahead. On the public health front, COVID-19 remains a serious problem. The global situation has taken a further turn for the worse, with both new infections and deaths continuing to climb. Even cities that initially brought the virus under control, like Hong Kong and Seoul, have suffered repeat outbreaks after they eased safe distancing measures and reopened their economies. It shows just how difficult it will be for Singapore to keep ourselves free from the virus. And this is why, as we gradually restore economic activity, reopen our borders and resume our lives, we are also building up our capacities to test and contact trace so that we can identify and stamp out new outbreaks quickly. But each one of us still needs to play our own part, stay vigilant, practice safe distancing, and minimize social interactions. That is how we can protect the health and the lives of our loved ones, especially our elderly. At the same time, we have to get our economy going again. This is an enormous task. In the second quarter, our GDP shrank a record 12.6% year on year. The four budgets this year have staved off the worst of the damage. But we have kept companies afloat and minimized retrenchments so far. But economic conditions will continue to be difficult, and we must expect to lose many more jobs. We will do our best to save as many as we can and help workers who still lose their jobs to find new work. The National Jobs Council is urgently working with the unions, business associations and government agencies on this vital task. We will also help businesses that have been shut down by COVID-19 to start up again. In particular, the construction sector has been badly affected by the outbreak in the migrant worker dormitories. We have almost completely tested all the migrant workers in the dorms and cleared the dorms of COVID-19. And we are exerting maximum effort to establish safe living and working conditions so that workers can get back to work as soon as possible while keeping the virus in check. But it is a very complicated task. And despite our best efforts, we'll take a few weeks more to complete. In the meantime, the government will lighten the burden of levies and fees on their employers and help them to get back on their feet. This is only fair to the employers. Many of them are small subcontractors. They are bearing a disproportionate share of the burden of keeping all of us safe from COVID-19. Then there are sectors that have been hard hit by the closure of international borders, like tourism, and aviation. Their recoveries will be slow. They rely heavily on the international market without a large domestic market to buffer them. But we are determined to help these sectors pull through as they are linked to many other parts of our economy. That's why the government put aside close to $2 billion in the budgets to support them. We must also be prepared that some industries will not return to what they were before. Then the government will face difficult choices, and so will the businesses themselves. We cannot afford to prop up failing industries indefinitely or trap workers in jobs that are no longer viable. The better long-term solution is to invest our resources to develop new capabilities, grow new industries, and create new jobs. Then we can help, help firms in the declining industries to reinvent themselves or pivot to other fields of business. 
We will also help workers in these industries reskill for the new jobs created. We were already doing this even before COVID-19 through Skills Future. But now the urgency is greater and we must redouble our efforts. Beyond the ongoing crisis, the government must also keep our eyes firmly on the future. One day the pandemic will be over and the economic crisis will pass. When that day comes, we have to be ready for the post-COVID-19 world. Our aim is not just to survive this storm, but also to set the long-term direction for the country. We must keep on improving Singapore year after year, generation after generation. Thus, we must press on with transforming our economy and upgrading our skills, working with our tripartite partners. This will help Singaporeans make the most of new opportunities, cope with new uncertainties, and improve their lives. And beyond economic prosperity, we must also fulfil the broader ambitions Singaporeans have for our country. We aspire to be a fair and just society with opportunities for all. We wish to fashion an inclusive community where we look out for one another, reach out to those who need help, and show every Singaporean that they have a stake in our future. We want to make this a home where Singaporeans always believe that their children will have better lives than themselves and the human spirit can flourish. This is the nation we are building together. To achieve these hopes and dreams, our political system must continue to work well for Singapore. The election has shown a strong desire among Singaporeans for greater diversity of views in politics. Voters want the PAP to form the government, but they also want more robust debate of policies and plans. And this trend is here to stay. We have to give expression to it and evolve our political system to accommodate it while maintaining our cohesion and sense of national purpose. This new parliament will have a total of 12 opposition MPs, the largest number in recent history. Ten are constituency MPs from the Workers' Party and two are NC MPs from the Progress Singapore Party. We will formally designate a leader of the opposition and provide him with staff support and resources to perform his role. I look forward to more vigorous but constructive debates in Parliament. I hope our colleagues across the aisle will step up to play their role of a responsible and loyal opposition. Their duty is not merely to raise criticisms and ask questions of the government, necessary as these functions are, but also, more importantly, to put forward serious policy alternatives to be scrutinised and debated. This way, we can help voters better understand the issues, choices and trade-offs. And in the process, improve policies and plans and deliver better outcomes for Singapore. Good politics depends not only on sound institutions, but also on high-quality political leadership. More than other countries, Singapore needs leaders who are capable and committed. Men and women who have the courage of their convictions, who command the respect of Singaporeans, and who can mobilise the population to achieve great things together. In this election, you have voted for me and my PAP team. With your mandate, I have formed the strongest cabinet I could to take Singapore through this crisis and beyond. The cabinet I have formed is a multiracial team, reflective of our multiracial society. Seven out of 20 full ministers are non-Chinese. We have been sworn in before the president with the chief justice in attendance, who both belong to minority communities. There can be no more vivid demonstration of how our meritocratic system works and the lengths we have gone to to ensure equal treatment and opportunities for every citizen, regardless of race, language or religion. My Cabinet also includes ministers and office holders from successive generations. 
The more senior ones have seen Singapore through past crises and can offer valuable guidance and views to help overcome the challenges we now face. The younger ministers are increasingly taking the lead, setting the agenda and engaging Singaporeans, for example, through the SG Together movement and the Emerging Singapore Conversations. They've also been leading our COVID-19 response and gained confidence dealing with the complex challenges of the pandemic. The new office holders will bring with them fresh ideas and perspectives and work hard to master the issues. It is a team that Singaporeans can be confident in and one that will walk with you every step of the way. Madam President, I have spent my entire adult life in public service. I will continue to devote myself to my country and people, drawing strength and purpose from the support of Singaporeans, young and old. My aim is to see through this crisis and hand over Singapore intact and in working order into good hands who can take the country further forward. I ask Singaporeans to extend to the younger ministers the same support that you have given me all these years. But leadership renewal is a never-ending task. We continue to need more good people from every generation to step forward, stand for election and serve our country. Singapore must have leaders who can take the rough and tumble of politics and who will commit all their energies to work and fight for what they believe in. Only with an exceptional leadership team working closely with Singaporeans can we continue to stand out in the world. We have achieved what few countries have in our 55 years since independence. A peaceful, multiracial society, vastly better lives for all, emerging stronger and resolving to do better after every crisis that has hit us. Let us now come together as one Singapore, keep improving our lives, securing our future, and building a nation we can all be proud to call home. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem. We've come to the end of the swearing-in ceremony for the ministers of Prime Minister Lee Sien Lung's cabinet. The ceremony held this evening at the State Room of the Astana and at Parliament House was conducted this evening as no other swearing-in 
in history involving safe distancing due to the COVID-19 situation. Now, the ceremony was presided over by President Halima Yaqob, and she remarked in her speech that if anything good has come out of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is the reaffirmation of our Singapore spirit. Our resilience as one people, she said, has brought us through this crisis so far. And in his speech, the Prime Minister gave a somber reminder that the COVID-19 situation, it remains a serious problem. And he reminded Singaporeans of the need to stay vigilant. Now, he spoke of the continued dire economic challenges that we face. The task, he said, is enormous. And he cautioned that we must prepare that some industries, they won't return to what they were before, and the government and businesses, they may face difficult choices. And in considering policies and policy alternatives to tackle the issues that we face, Prime Minister Lee says that he's looking forward to vigorous and constructive debate in Parliament with his colleagues across the aisle. Our aim, he said, is not just to survive this storm, but also to set the long-term direction for our country. Let us come together as one Singapore, he said, and build a nation that we are all proud to call home. Thank you for watching. Stay with us. Asia Tonight is just ahead.